Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a chi-square test of independence to see the independence of two variables. Now, in the last post, I showed you how to do this, but the data was already summarized in a two-way table. I wanted to show you how to do this on a raw data set. Now, when you conduct a survey, your data kind of looks like this. This is called a data matrix. So each of these rows represents a different person that has answered the survey. So this person one said they were a college graduate and they supported, um, I think this is about oil drilling. Uh, the second person is not a college graduate and they answered that they don't know. Uh, the third respondent said they are not a college graduate and they oppose and so forth. So here, if I scroll down, I have a lot of data and this is what like I said, this is what uh, survey data comes up as. And here it happens to have 827 people in this, in this study. So the first thing we'd like to do is we'd like to summarize this in a two-way table, and then we're gonna do the test of independence in a very quick way using the tools in Excel. Um, one of the ways to summarize data is to create a pivot table. But we, before we can do that, we actually have to turn this into a table itself. It's very easy. We go to insert and we go table and it automatically selects all the relevant data. We want to make sure that the checkbox says my table has headers is on because my table does have headers here on top. I'm going to click OK and um, I'll turn off this filter button because we're not going to filter anything right now. And you see it formats it and creates it into a table. Okay. So the, it already gives us table a name, it's called table one. So let's keep that in mind. And then I'm gonna click on insert pivot table and I'll call it the table source will be table one. I want the result to be in the existing worksheet and starting at the cell E1. So I'll just click on it and then click okay. Um, for the columns, I'd like to have the, whether the person is a college graduate or not. And for the rows, I'll have whether they support or oppose or don't know. And I can drag either one of these to the values. And what will happen is I will have the count data of this data set. So it summarizes. So it looks like 131 of the respondents said that they were not college graduates and that they did not know about oil drilling, how to answer the question. Um, this cell indicates that 180 uh, of the respondents were college graduates and they oppose oil drilling and so forth. Here we have the row totals and here we have the column totals. And of course the grand total, as we saw earlier, is 827. Okay, so these uh, values that we see over here are um, observed values. So we'll call these actual or observed values, okay? All right, so the next thing we have to do is we have to get the expected values under the null hypothesis of independence, okay? So these values here are actuals and we'd like to get the expected. So it's not very hard. We can just copy paste this. So I'm gonna go Control C or Command C on the Mac and Command V or Control C, Control V on Windows. And then we're gonna delete these actual values. And then I'm going to show you a very quick way to get the expected counts. As you saw in the previous video, we had to do it manually to do the row total times column total divided by the grand total for each one of these cells. It turns out there's a very easy way to do this. What I do is I just select all the cells that are gonna get the expected count. And then I type in a matrix multiplication formula. It's called MMULT. And the first array I'm going to pick is I'm just gonna drag these, drag and select these row totals comma, the column totals as my array two, close the parentheses, and then divided by my grand total, okay? 
Now this formula is not a single cell formula, it's actually an array formula. So in order to make sure I evaluate this on all six cells that I originally selected, I have to do control shift enter. Okay, and there you go. We now have the expected counts in one step. Okay, and next we're going to calculate the p-value of the chi-square test. And again, there's a built-in function. It's called chi-square test, chi-square dot test. And there are two things we have to put here. We have to put the actual range. So I just click and select these actual counts, comma. I can click and drag these expected counts, close the parentheses, and press enter. And that's the p-value. And that's it. So let's summarize this one more time. This is the expected counts. Okay? So that's the actual and that's the expected. I repeat this one more time. Equals chi-square dot test actual range, select the counts, comma, expected range, select the counts, close parentheses, enter. And as you can see, the p-value is very small, so we would reject the null hypothesis of independence in support of uh, the alternative that there is a dependence between these two variables. Finally, if you want to check your work by hand, and you probably calculated the test statistic by hand, you can get the test statistic, the chi-square test statistic value, by just typing in chi-square dot inverse dot right tail, and then the probability is this p-value, and the degrees of freedom is the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, so that's three minus one times two minus one, that's two, and this will give us the test statistic value that we would have gotten if we were doing this by hand, okay? So there you have it. That is a quick way to do a chi-square test of independence of two variables starting from a raw data set just like this.